What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we got a glimpse of the Christopher Reeve documentary that's going to be coming out when? September? I think it's 21st. Okay. Uh, what did you think of it? Uh, it was pretty emotional. Uh, I guess I was not expecting it to be as much of an inside look at his recovery and the tragedy and what followed as it was. I thought, and, and the trailer maybe is skewing what you actually will see. Um, but there's a number of very graphic, like very moving, like behind the scenes shots, including one of the accident, which yeah. I didn't even know like, they oh, snap. But it tells you that I mean, obviously the family is the one that's sort of behind this, so they're willing to take you all the way inside. Um, so yeah, I found myself getting a little bit emotional, like you know, even and listening. And they obviously have all you see all the kids participating, including the one who looks just like him, Will. Um, you know, and, and so there was some celebrity friends as well. So it looks like a really interesting kind of moving um, piece of work. And then I guess I didn't realize they were gonna put this in theaters in a limited release, which I'm assuming is a way to raise money for sort of the, the research and foundation that he's, he's been a part of since the in, you know since he was injured and obviously since he passed away. So I think- Give me your prediction, because you know where he's leading to. Give me your prediction. Um. Well, then when I saw that it was being put in the theater, I immediately texted you. I was like, you know, it'd be perfect. Is like, here's where you could sneak in. Here's where you sneak in the Superman teaser and you get more people to go for a good cause. Yeah. See yeah. something, a worthwhile story. But that's fine if they want to go to just see the two and a half, two minutes or the 90 seconds you want to tease people with for next summer. That to me looks, sounds like a perfect opportunity to surprise show that at the end of the film. i would show that at the end of that uh, that would be like the end credits oh yeah there you go do it that yeah. way like yeah. do it that way but i mean i think it's the perfect forum to do it um and i i am officially like tinfoil hat is on and looking at that where no one's talking about it and saying like that would make a lot of sense yeah yeah what did you think it when I was watching it and I saw that they were sort of leading up towards showing a glimpse of the accident, I was like, wow, they actually showed that. I had been following Christopher Reeve's life, you know, from afar, obviously, whenever he came up in the news. I, I think there were some specials that he did when they were talking about stem cells. Um, and obviously, I've seen a lot of his films, Brian, and uh, switching channels with Burt Reynolds and uh, Christopher Reeve was in that movie, Somewhere in Time, and obviously the Superman films. And to see his life is definitely going to be a nostalgic uh, feeling in seeing those moments and how they prepare to do this film. And that was his coming out party right there, the Superman film, Brian with people talking about how they first received the film possibly while they were doing it, that behind the scenes sort of talk of perhaps the awe that they were witnessing, Brian. That's gonna be very uh, interesting for me to watch. Yeah, I I'm looking forward to seeing it. What well, would have been gold, and I don't think they'll have it in there, but it, it, it would have blown me away is if they could have gotten a quote from Gene Hackman who is notorious since he retired from cinema 20 years ago. I don't think he's ever given an interview. Um, and he lives in New Mexico. He's still alive. He's in his 90s. Um, but that's actually, but it, I mean, obviously one of the greatest actors that ever lived. That would have been one perspective on a young Christopher Reeve that I would, I would kill to hear if he'd be willing to offer it. I don't think he'll be in the documentary, but um, if, they, if they wanted like a, a sort of a bombshell even audio once would this comes out, me. that would be it. Because no, I'm serious. No one has talked or seen or had anything to do with Hackman since he retired um, from Hollywood 20 years ago. But you know, this is a guy who won Oscars and was generally regarded as one of the best living actors, and obviously played the original Lex Luthor. So he saw Christopher Reeve from the beginning. Um, but so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the retrospective of him getting the part. There's stuff that I've read and I've seen about you know him getting it, the training where he, you know they talked about like a, he refused the muscle suit. This is back in 1970, whatever. Like, you know, he refused to have the suit doctored. He basically was like, I'm going to do this on my own. You know, and obviously he didn't quite have all the all the techniques that today they might have to help enhance. Um, yeah, him. Yeah. But, you know, he he wound up looking great. And you know, as we said, the suit itself is not all that necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, he yeah, makes yeah. it work. Yeah. You know? and, and his physique really works in the part. And he was six foot four. Um, so 
Yeah, there's no, some interesting storylines yeah. um, that occurred with um, one of the actors uh, in Superman two from the 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 trio, the the bigger guy, the mute that yeah, not. Guy. Yes, there was some <laughs> some very interesting interaction between him and Christopher Reeve. Uh, let's see if that even makes it into the the documentary. Cause aside, I actually would want to see this in the theater. So I, I think I will see it in the theater. There. Let's see if James Gunn does that. That would be. It's a smart piece of marketing too, because they, they they send it to the theater for I think it's about a week, maybe two weeks. Then it goes straight to Max, and it goes to Max just after the Penguin is premiering. So they are giving you like a lot of reason to to get back on Max if you're not um, with that with that one two punch. So I think that's smart. Big segue, Brian. <laughs> the news, Brian. When you sent it to me, that that Pattinson and his Brian, and is not to say that his presence will not be felt or discussed, but Pattinson will not be in Penguin. And again, it's not to say that Batman's presence will not be uh, felt. But it's disappointing in that you can't go one day to shoot this one scene or this, you know what I'm saying? Little sprinkles, little things here and there, Brian. That would have made it all worthwhile, but they're really banking on this performance from Colin Farrell, which seems to be the talk of the town, Brian, and something that we've been looking forward to seeing because we we saw it in its initial... Genesis in the Batman, that performance, Brian. And it's not to say that we will not feel Batman's presence and he, it won't be spoken of, which would be disappointing if it wasn't, if it was just completely ignored. I don't think they're going to be that crazy, Brian. What are no, your they, thoughts on? No, they explicitly will not. So these quote, there's some quotes from the showrunner and from Matt Reeves about this subject that make me think there was a version of this where he was in it. Um, and I don't know if that means he ever shot anything for it or not, but it sounds like this is something that was debated and they ultimately have decided not to. So let me give you the quote. So the showrunner is Lauren LaFranc. And so here's her quote. To me, I think it packs a different punch because Matt's films are through the lens of Batman. So you're high up looking down the city. That's a different looking down on the city. That's a different perspective with Oz. You're in the streets. You're in the grit and the muck and the grime. He's looking up, wanting to claw his way to the top. So it's a different experience. And I think Gotham is an interesting enough city that it deserves to have more doors unlocked within it and for us to walk through those and see what we think, end quote. What do you think about that idea of like Batman floating above the city, descending down versus this being a streets level show going up? Yeah, I understand the perspective because this is from, this is called the Penguin, and this is his uh, story, his ambition, his journey to being the guy taking over everything, right? Yeah, this is his Michael Corleone, right? Yeah, so I get it. Yeah, I get it. I I, I just want to know that Batman is causing problems for him outside in the streets, and it would have been nice. A end credit scene to lead up to. I don't know, Brian, but without Batman and some of these things, although they can be great, it always feels like it's missing something. So I'll give you Reeves' quote, and then I have like a conspiracy theory or like just sort of random idea. So this is Reeves' discussion of it. Quote, I don't feel like it's missing anything fundamental. I feel like it's an extension of what is fundamentally there. We know this is the world of Batman. So the specter of Batman is there. The specter of the Riddler is there. The specter of everything that happens in the last movie is there. It informs it, and it's exactly where we begin, end quote. The way he says that makes me think they thought about it, where he's kind of like, I don't feel like it's missing anything fundamental. I kind of fill in that blank of like, they wrestle with this idea of like, should Pattinson be in the show? Should he do this? Should he do that? And then they were like, ultimately, no. I understand that. I get it. I get it. I get I get the perspective that it will be a distraction, perhaps. Uh, we all know that Batman 
exists. We all know that what happened happened because of where it takes place from, Brian. But we also know that Batman understood what would happen after this event. Escalation. Yeah. He had to change whatever that may be. I just want to know that Bruce Wayne is out there. He's uh, doing fundraising. He's 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 retrofitting the city for his uh, for his missions. Whatever the case may be, Bruce Wayne is in the is is in the vicinity or in that world trying to make some change. Brian, I I just want to see something. I think. So you hit on my conspiracy theory. Okay, which is neither of them says that Bruce Wayne is not in the show. Okay. What if, and they don't say that Robert Pattinson is not in the show. They say that Batman is not in the show. Okay. What if he is in the show just as Bruce Wayne for a scene or two? I think that's perfectly acceptable. And in fact, yes, it, it might be better. It might be better because they don't know each other yet in that way. And so I'm, yes. I'm not, it's probably a 1% chance. Mm -hmm. But with these things, you got to look at the specifics. And these people are smart enough to dance around on technicalities. And the way the question's asked and the way they answered it, they could be telling you the complete truth. Batman yeah. is not in this show. And Robert Pattinson might be for a scene or two. And there's no mention at all about Jeffrey Wright. At all. There's no discussion about Gordon, who could also feasibly be in the show somewhere and make a lot of sense as a street-level investigator of whatever Oz is doing. So I feel like there's some, there's some outs here as much as they're talking about this in this way. It'll be interesting to see how much we cut away from Oz. What other storylines are being, what other characters were being introduced to, Brian? Uh, what conversations are being had that affect Oz and his mission to I, uh, to take over. Well, Falcone's daughter is clearly going to be a co-lead. Yes. Kristen Milati is. That, that's no question. I mean, every promotional material has made it clear she is, I think, as much billing as Colin Farrell for this show. So I think we're definitely getting a a, a trip down the Falcone ra family rabbit hole. Um, and again, that sort of fits with if you're headed towards some of these other stories that they seemingly want to tell. You know, you kind of need to get in the crime families of Gotham um, to kind of make that happen. Uh, I think we're clearly also getting, you know, some Sal Maroney with our good friend Clancy Brown. Um, so, you know, I think that's also going to be something that gets introduced formally in this, even though he was referenced in in the last one in the movie. So, yeah, I think I think all that's fine. So. And I think it remains to be seen. We could get to the end of these episodes and feel like it, it was a good decision not to have Batman yeah, appear. Certainly, That's possible. Certainly. I just find it difficult to believe that these gangsters, these conversations where they're talking pretty serious stuff, that they're not talking about Batman and the pro and, and, and him being a problem. Well, I think that will happen. Okay. I think you'll see I'm the good. bats. I think you'll see the bat signal. I think you'll see discussions of plans that are sort of meant to try to be one step ahead of this guy they don't understand who's out there. I think that will happen for sure. And yeah, that would, that's absolutely what Matt Reeves is talking about. Specter of Batman, right? It's like that. It actually is kind of like that opening scene of the Batman where you already see like when the symbol is up in the sky and like some of the, some of the perps are already like nervous because they don't really know, is he going to find me? Like, I think you're going to see more of that for sure. So. And I'll be good with that. If that would be the case. Uh, so, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the possibility of uh, James Gunn's uh, Superman trailer popping up in this Christopher Reeve documentary that's supposed to come out September 21st. Yeah, I'm going to double check. But, yes, I believe it's it's, it's the third week of September is when it goes. To, it's for the, in the theater for, I think, one week. It's certainly a possibility and a great marketing tool if they did that. And let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Batman not being seen in the Penguin. Because I believe that is what we're talking about. So what are your thoughts on that not happening? Does it make you 
think a bit differently? Or are you going into, I think how we're going into it similarly with seeing how the penguin is, how Colin Farrell performs with, uh, with, the, the, with this character now that he has a lot of room to cook. Can right? he, I don't know if he can win it. Can he be nominated for an Emmy for this? Not this year, right? No, for it would be for the 2025. I, like, I, I wouldn't see why wouldn't he? he? I think he's got a shot. I don't think he could. He'd be the favorite to win, but I think he'd be have a shot to get a nomination. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Also, here, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe and share with others who talk about this stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. The show goes on. Yeah.